I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at, uh, uh, I have been praying uh, concerning the ministry and concerning my life and concerning you and our nation. Hallelujah. And uh, the Lord began to talk to me, I believe, about the fear of the Lord. On Tuesday night, Bolivar, Thursday night here, I began to teach and share out of that which God had put in my heart. And I'm going to continue, and I don't know how long I'll be on this, how many weeks. But I believe this is something that God wants to bring to the forefront of the people of God. And as I, as I meditated over the fear of the Lord and what does it mean? And sh how should I be walking? How should I carry myself? How should my man of conversation be? How should I let the world see me as I call myself a believer? And uh, in our nation, the United States, the fear of the Lord has just about departed out of our nation. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's true. I use this, I, I refer to when I was a child, the atmosphere was a little different. The climate was different. I was telling them this morning that my father was a grown man. And uh, I don't know, it was probably at the time, eight or nine of us children. My father ended up having 15 children and mom and I remember that uh, my father did something that to hurt my mother's feeling. I did something. I can't recall what it was, but she sent one of us to my grandmother's house, my, dad, my dad's mom, and she came down. We lived in this, wasn't far away. And she came down, and she walked in the house. And my father's name is James. And she said, James, sit down. Now, he's a grown man. He sit down just like a little child. She said, straighten yourself up. He tried to, I don't know what he did. She said, now, what you've done today, I don't ever want to see you do this again. You hear me? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, you got all these kids. You're going to take care of these kids. You're going to do so and so. He said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I don't want to hear no more or nothing like this. I don't want them to ever have to come get me. Whatever, whatever. And he said, yes, ma'am. And I'm just a kid, and I'm watching how my grown, big old, tall daddy, he was about 6'4". I'm watching how he's obeying this. My grandmother was a little short lady. How is this man being so attentive and respectful to this little short woman? But what I discerned was is that in his growing up, he was trained to respect, to reverence, to give honor to those what they call back then grown folk. Now that's just about gone out of the earth today. You didn't say yes to a grown person. You would say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And a lot of people that move from up north will come down, and if you're from that way, no, I'm not throwing off. And you hear us say that, and the man said, why are you cowing down to people? Why don't you just tell them, say, yeah, no. I said, no, it's not a matter of cowing down. It's a matter of training. And I said, they're reading you down south because you need some training. <laughs> I said it to them. Amen. See, we, we, we've got to learn, and I, I'm going to take my time. You've got to learn about the fear of the Lord. It's way more than those words I just spoke. And I meditated and thought on this thing, and what I realized was my father respected my grandmama because somewhere they had put the fear of the Lord in him. And he knew better to act outrageous and unseemly with my grandmother. And I mean, my, the whole time, I, my grandmother died when I was young, but 
The whole time I recall my grandmother and my father, and he, my father had a brother, and he was kind of wild like, but my grandmother would tell him, sit and step down. He'd sit down just like somebody telling a child. And so it, it tells me that in their training growing up, they taught them something about the fear of God and how you're supposed to carry yourself. And I'm going to say this to parents today. It's needed now more than ever that you train your children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen? And it's going to take some time to do that. And so, you know, we, we let our children, back in my day, we didn't have games and, you know, electronic things to, to mess with. Uh, so we th they tell us to go outside and play. And we did that, of course. Uh, but even with all of that, they still taught us about the fear of the Lord. I mean, if they said, sit down, you sit down. Just out of reverential fear that that's your mama. They tell you, shut your mouth, you shut your mouth. But we're in a different time now. We're in a different time. The seasons has changed, and uh, we're in the last days, and so the behavior of people has changed, and, and even in our nation, it certainly has lost the fear of the Lord. But you know, I said this Thursday night that if the church would get back the fear of the Lord, the world would begin to respect the church. And the reason the world makes light of the church today for, for a great deal is because they don't see the fear of the Lord in the church. And I don't care what nobody say, amen, when the fear of the Lord is in the church, hallelujah, the world will begin to respect. I remember a man on our street that, who, you know, he had some town drunks back in the day, and they, they just drink and act a fool and walk the back. This is back when people didn't have cars like they do now. And I remember they would come down the street drinking, you know, drunk and just and with the hat all wrong and cussing and everything. But when they would get in front of certain people's houses that they knew, say, Miss So-and-so was saved, and she's out on the porch because people sit on the porch back in them days. When they get there, they straighten up. Pull a hat right and say, how you doing, Miss So-and-so? And they say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And he'd walk on, and then after he gets so far, he'd twist their head around and go back crazy. They would even come by the church drinking. But when they got to that church, they put everything down. They buttoned their little coats up. If they had a jacket on, straightened the little shoulder up, tried to walk sober. But that's because there was something that had gotten in them that helped them to change. So that's the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord will cause you to watch your behavior, how you carry yourself, what you do, what you say, what you allow in your life. And I'm afraid that God, God has to help the church. When God began to deal with me about the fear of the Lord, honestly, I began to just go over it in my own life. And I found myself getting before God and repenting that there were times I, I would give answers in response to a conversation that didn't really have the fear of the Lord in it. No, the fear of the Lord will cause you to walk peaceably with your brothers and sisters. Somebody may do you wrong, but that fear of the Lord will cause you to check yourself. And whereas you want to go all crazy, it'll pull you right in and cause you to shut your mouth. Sometimes just shut up and walk off. It will give you the ability to follow your instructions. Say that, follow your instructions. The church needs help. The body of Christ corporately need help in following what? Instruction. I mentioned this Thursday night. You know, if the church, if the body of Christ or local church that you attend says we have service at 9, 15, Bible, whatever, uh, 11 o'clock worship service, and da, 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 Tuesday night Bible study, and you come on Sunday morning at 9, 45, you come at 11, 30, or you come on Tuesday night or whatever night you're having service, supposed to be 7, you get there at 7, 30, 7, 25, 7, 30, 7, you don't really, you're not exercising the fear of God. Because the fear of God brings about a holy reverence. And this is whose house? God's house. So when you fail to come and show up and be on time, you're saying, I can treat God any kind of way I want to. But that's not the way you reverence God. And for that, all of us need to repent. Yeah, I'll say that again so you can get it clear because God made it clear to me. My house shall be called a house of prayer of what? All nations. And if there's a time that we say we agree to meet God, God is here ready to meet us. And we fail and just kind of haphazardly come like we want to when we want to. We're saying, God, I don't really respect you. 
Now, you wouldn't do your job like that because they wouldn't keep you. You wouldn't do your appointment for your loan because you wouldn't get the loan. Now, I'm only trying to make, break, bring this thing down so clear that you can't miss it. All of us need to check our, whether or not if we, are, we have or possess the fear of the Lord, where? In our hearts. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, we need to guard our hearts. The Bible said, guard your heart. For out of your heart proceeds the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you got to make sure you put some fear of God in your heart so you don't talk to your spouse, uh, either one of y'all, any kind of way. The fear of the Lord won't let you just uh, beat your wife down and slap your wife around and then get up in church and talk about hallelujah. Not the fear of God. The fear of God will have you to treat your wife or your husband one right. It'll have you watch the words that you say. You know, you don't want to hurt. The fear of God brings about a peaceableness and a righteousness, whereas you speak to your companion, you're going to try to make sure you minister to them. Amen. You, you learn how to say, thank you for cooking my food. Yeah, I know you went to the job, but she ain't got to cook that food. She can th throw your sandwich on the table and, amen, and say, that's some food. But she goes through the uh, hardship of boiling you some whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying. And put some labor in it. And then when you come home, you're not even thankful. You need the what? Fear of God in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, hear instruction and refuse them not. That's when you, when you, if you'll take hold of that, you'll possess the what? Fear of God. And a lot of folk don't have it. Tongue talking, dancing people do not possess the fear of God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, how can they hear without a what? And how can he preach except he be sent? Well, if I've been sent, then your, your job is to have the fear of God and what? Hear. If you decide you don't want to hear, you're saying to God, I don't need you. You know, Ananias and Sapphira, they had church. Peter preached to 3,000 folk that got saved. He walks in there and praise God, and they're trying to gather some uh, finances together to, so that all would have something, none would be without. And Ananias coming in and told that lie, said, we ain't got nothing. Hallelujah. And she fa he fell dead. Why? Didn't fear God. His wife coming there and told the same lie. And Peter said, you, hey Amen, you have not lied unto me. Who was present? Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what he is. Holy. So you don't want to act in any kind of way. Before you even come to church, your reverence don't start when you walk in these doors. Your reverence started when you got up this morning and knew you wanted to go to church. You start preparing your hearts before you got here. That's what reverence is. But sometimes we sit down, I'm going to church. I don't want nobody saying that I'm not there. And then you get there, you sit down, and you ain't got the right spirit. You didn't reverence God what? At all. I don't want to hear so-and-so sing. I'm just sick of them. Where's your reverence? Ananias was dressed. He they drug him out of there. Sapphira, his wife, they drug him out of there. They say, you haven't lied to me. You lied to the Holy Ghost. You and I got to be careful about how we carry ourselves where? In the presence of God. God is a holy God. This nation's got to find that out. The other day, our president that I'm praying for, and our vice president I'm praying for, with the right hand, he swore on the day of, of inauguration, he's going to uphold the Constitution. He's going to da-da-da-da on his own Bible. And in that same day, with his left hand, he signed the executive order to say that uh, same sex is okay, praise God, and give money to not only this nation, but every other nation for, to carry out the acts of abortion. Right hand on the Bible, left hand signing something that's contrary to the Bible. How can you do that? You don't fear God. I know this may upset some of y'all because he's your man. But I don't care if it, who it is, o Obama, Trump, Biden, if you don't reverence God, you're in trouble. And every nation that forget God is going where? Down. If you forget God, you're going where? Down. 
And some people don't understand what, what's wrong with their life. They've forgotten God. Terrible mistake is to forget God. Hallelujah. And so what people don't realize is that when you, when you hear reverence toward God, in times there comes a judgment. You just treat God any kind of way, live any kind of way, and do anything, 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 anytime you get ready. After a while, God gets tired. Remember, sin has a, a, a time of judgment. When sin gets full, it's a judgment. When, when, when Abraham was praying and interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, he said, Lord, if that be 50 men, will you not spare? God said, yeah. What about 40, 30? God said, amen, 20. Then the Lord spoke and said, shall not the righteous judge? Of all the earth, do what? Right. God is going to do right. But God knew that in Sodom there wasn't one person except Lot, who had almost got his righteous soul, what? Vexed. Hanging around junk. That's not right. Sin will affect you. You get some a nasty smell and hang around it, and hey amen, you done took a clean bath. But if you hang around it long enough, you'll stink as bad as what you just left. And there's a whole lot of stench in the house of what? God. And God want to get it out. I've been talking to you about much more. The glory is coming. The greater glory. Much more is coming. But God is trying to get us ready. Because you're not going to stand, hallelujah, in this kind of glory. Amen. And don't have the fear of the Lord in your life. All this message is about is getting us what? Ready. I say ready. You don't believe that. Hallelujah. Just keep living. Amen. Live and don't dis disregard God and let his presence come in a supernatural way. And you try to hang out in that, brother, that anointing can help you or it can hurt you. Shout hallelujah. Amen. They, I mean, my God, the Bible says, amen, the beginning of wisdom, hallelujah, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. My God, if you don't have no, no, no uh, 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 fear, you don't have no wisdom. And all of us need some wisdom in our daily living. When we come to the house of God, it ought to be like a person on the uh, military base. And when you see somebody, the, the private, see the sergeant, hey amen, you give him attention. Why? He has greater what? Authority. Well, God has what? Greater authority. And when we come here, we ought to salute God and say, yes, sir, God. Whatever you say, yes, sir shouldn't come in here with our own minds about how we're going to do it and what we're going to do. No. The fear of the Lord is say, whatever you say, God. I say, yes, Lord. In Matthew 20, I think 25, about the 10 versions, the Bible said all of them had oil. But five of them wasted their oil. Why? No fear of God. And at midnight, a what? Cry was made. Said, Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. The five foolish said, hey, talking to the wise now, give us of your own. They said, not so. They kept, their, they kept themselves in the fear of God. They didn't let their lives get out here and become foolish and throw it away. Five of them could not run and meet Jesus. Because when they went there, the door was open and then it was what? Shut. While wow, the door is open, baby, hey, amen, come on through it. Why God is calling you out of iniquity, come on out of it. Why God is trying to save you, let him what? Save you. Okay, listen, listen, now they all were virgins. But five of them were what? Foolish. This is not a time to become foolish. This hour demands what? Wisdom. You know, the world, I, I get tickled at the world somewhat. It thinks it's got it going on. The, the wicked think they got it going on now. Our agenda's going forward. Everything we want is going forward. But they forget. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And they that dwell of what? Therein. God is in charge of this world. Not our government. God. And the government going to get some surprises after a while. Because when you decide you know better than God, you've decided that you're going to tell God how to do it. Amen. Like that song said years ago, a movie said your arms are too short to box with God. You can't beat God. Amen. He's bigger than all of us. I thought this morning that Satan was the 
chief worshiper. Man, wasn't nobody in heaven worship higher, greater than, than Satan. He had, all, he had instruments within his back. He sit upon the circle of the earth, the scripture says. He glorified God. And as he did, everybody in heaven, what? Glorified God. And all of a sudden, he saw what God was getting. And he decided he wanted it. Made a mistake. And the Bible said pride filled his heart. He decided he's going to take what's God. Wisdom tell, ought to tell you this. Hey, man, you ain't no match for God. You and I need to say, yes, Lord. That's, that, that, that ought to be our totally surrender. Yes, Lord. Whatever you say, I say yes. And because of that, amen, God threw him out of heaven. Threw him out. That's why Satan is so hard after us. He knows what it's going to be like. He knows he'll never entertain it, never taste of it, never partake of it, and he hates us for it. He hates you when you humble yourself because he failed to do that. Pride, man, is a dangerous thing. Humility is the way. Jesus said, low is the way. Pride will destroy you. There's a whole lot of folk in the church full of what? Pride. How do I know that? You won't even forgive somebody. How do I know what they did to me and I'm not good? You're just full of pride. If you were full of the fear of God, you would, you would take the wrong and, and forgive them. See that they were what? Restored. Hallelujah. Too many marriages, are, are people are getting divorces because of what? Pride. Neither one will humble them and say, we're wrong, I'm wrong, you're wrong. Now let's get this thing together. Let me, let me look at Psalms 25. I started that the other night and try to go on. Somebody said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I said, hallelujah. Psalm 25, if you have your Bible. It says, verse, I'm going to read it, verse number 12. What man is he that feared the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. He that fears God, whatever man it is, God said, I'll choose, I'll, I'll, Teach that man in the way that he should choose. God will teach you to make the right what? Choices. And the reason some of us made such terrible choices is no fear of God. Whatever choice you make, it ought to be back in the, the behind that. It ought to be with how will God feel about this? What does God say about this? What does the word say about it? And the culture said, I don't need God. I'm smarter than God. What foolish talk. We are nothing compared to God. He said, this man that feared the Lord, he will, he will choose him and teach him uh, how to make the right decision, if I can use that. Verse 13 said, this man, his soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The man that fears God, his soul shall dwell what? At ease, not worried, not trembling. Yeah, there's some bad things going on in the earth, but I am not trembling. I'm at ease. Why? My life is in God's what? Hand. I trust God. I'm at ease. And he said, my, my seed shall inherit it. The, the earth, they're going to be blessed. Why? Because I'm a man that what? Fear of God. He cleans us and said, let us hear the conclusion. Of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his what? Commandments. Do what? Fear God. Keep his what? Commandments. That's a person that have the reverential fear where? In their hearts. You and I better make up our mind. We going to fear who? God. The glory is a, a both shire. It's arising and you and I going to have to walk in the what? Fear of God. Let me give you an example. In John 17, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. And there appeared Moses, and there appeared Elijah. The glory of God was so great, and Peter didn't know what to do with it. He said, well, let's be a three times. Like one for Moses, one for Elijah, one for thee. Jesus, hallelujah, amen. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how. And after a while, amen, Moses disappeared. Elijah disappeared. And there Jesus' garments changed. Brighter than the noonday sun. You know what God was trying to tell him? Peter, it's all about me. Jesus, it's not Moses, not Elijah, it's me. And when he, when, he, when he saw that, Peter said, Lord, it was good for us to what? Be here. 
And I'm going to tell you something. I believe Peter had a, but, but God, God knew what he was doing. But had he got really foolish kind of talking up there, he could not have stood in that kind of glory. He stepped into another world. Did you know that? He stepped behind the veil. I mean, the mountain was a mountain, baby. It was grass up there, rocks and everything in the natural. But he stepped beyond that. The fear of God will take you to places you have never gone in your life. What's coming to the church is eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. But it's going to require the fear of the Lord to dwell in our hearts so God can let us step over into the glory land. Shout hallelujah. Peter, John, they saw something, baby. And I'll tell you something, they will never forget that. And what that should put produced in Simon's life after was a fear of the Lord. In the book of Acts, when, when Ananias and Sapphira died because they disrespected God, it should have created a what? The Bible said great fear came upon the church. I don't mean fear like and, 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 you know, and intimidating or hurtful, but reverence. God is in the house. You have to be careful. Somebody's up here being ministered to and the Holy Ghost is moving and you sitting up here in the flesh. You laughing and talking, ha, ha, ha. baby, you're not referencing God. Because if God is here, he's where you are. Yeah, you think, because you, think, you don't have your mind up here, God ain't here. But amen, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, God dwells where? In the whole earth. So if God is back here, he's back here. So make sure that you respect when God is in the what? In the house. Well, what you going to eat for lunch? Man, it ain't about that. It's about God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Giving. Come before his courts with what? Praise. He said, Lord, help me to have the fear of the Lord. I want you to know something. Upon being born again, fear did. the fear of the Lord did come in you. But it's up to you to maintain it. I say it's up to you to maintain that. Hallelujah. People, well, the Bible says in Malachi, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. If you're not paying your tithe, you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Because if God requ requires that and you're not doing it, you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Let's get quiet on that, didn't it? Yeah. If you fear God, you're going to obey him. So those, the non-tithers don't have a reverence for God, hallelujah, as they claim they do. Because if you reverence God, you would give God what's due him. Now the non-tither, don't get mad, just change. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. To be honest with you, I'm afraid not to give to God, not in an intimidating way, but I'm, I'm persuaded that can't nobody bless me more than God. So since can't nobody bless me more than God, I'm going to honor God and reverence him and bring what he told me to bring in. Praise God. You know, what was it, Cain and Abel? Hallelujah. Cain brought an offering, but Abel brought the what? The bass. Why? He respected and reverenced who? God. Well, how is that? Because Cain, uh, Abel brought an offering with blood. Cain brought something from the fruit of the ground. He didn't give God. See, reverence would cause you to give God your what? Your best. You missed that. I said reverence in God will cause you to give God not, not, not crumbs, but your what? Your best. And the reason a lot of people don't prosper and do well, and very good people, is because they don't honor God, so you don't give God the opportunity to honor you back. Give, and it what? Shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give where? Into your bosom. Remember the man that had a big crop? Man, he, his, his, I mean, his crop just exploded. And he thought to himself, what am I going to do? The reverential fear of God would have said, look how God has blessed me. Now God, who do you want me to bless? But selfishness, self-will said to him, listen now, I'm going to tear this barn down. I'm going to build me a bigger barn. He did it. And he died. Wisdom will keep you alive. Selfishness will cut your life off early. So I haven't been called a little selfish. We've been called to be helpless one to who? Another. A selfish person can be a dangerous person. Houses on fire, they get themselves out before they will you. 
a person with the fear of God, amen, they care about